Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, everyone, for turning in their homework on time, especially on Monday. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a good idea to, to have your homework turned in early because there's going to be a lot of information and you're going to need a lot of time uh, to study the material before your quiz is on, on Friday. So uh, I think it's a pretty good strategy. So today's lecture is going to, uh, are there any questions up to this point? <clears throat> on, <clears throat> excuse me, on uh, the microcaceae, which includes the micrococcus and the three strep species. It's, um, it's pretty easy to distinguish between the four. Tomorrow in class, I'm, I'm going to go over how to distinguish, but you already know, uh, but I'm just going to uh, review how to distinguish between the four species, Micrococcus, Staph aureus, uh, Staph epigen, Staph saprophyticus. Streptococcus is pretty similar, but it's uh, a much larger scale than the Staph, but it's still pretty easy. And, and I'm going to go over it. And again, if I say um, key things like this is going to be on the test or make sure you know this, make sure you put an asterisk on this. Uh, one note. Um, going back to the staff, going back to staff, regarding the coagulase test, regarding the coagulase test, if you have a slide coagulase test that's positive, then it ends right there. You have staph aureus. However, if you have a slide coagulase that is negative, it doesn't stop there. You have to proceed to the tube. So a slide coag negative, uh, a slide co uh, coagulase negative does not necessarily mean you have staph epi if you, because it's possible that you can still have the free coagulase. So if you have a slight, a negative slide coagulase, do a tube coagulase and then finalize it. If the tube is negative, then it's uh, a coag negative staph. Remember, it's not necessarily staph epi because staph saprophyticus is coagulase negative. You don't call it staph epi. It's called a coag negative staph. The only way that you determine between staph epi and staph saprophyticus is the Nova Biasin test. Okay, so uh, with a negative slide coagulase test, it's coag negative staph because you have to do the tube coagulase. So that's something that I'll, I'll probably reiterate uh, to you later on in preparation for your quizzes on, on Friday. Okay, let's move on to strep. Um, so it's a nice lecture, it's 109 slides, but it'll, it'll go by quick. Okay, strep pyogenes is group A. Make sure you know uh, your Lansfield groups, group A, group B, uh, group D, those are the main Lansfield groups that you'll know. And strep pyogenes is group A, it's beta hemolytic. Strep agalacti is beta or gamma, but usually it's beta. I've never seen a gamma group B. So that's a strep group B. And then there's group C, F, and G. Those are also beta hemolytic, but they're not clinically significant. So the two main ones of the beta hemolytic strep are A and B, okay? Pyogenes and A galactii. Other strep is strep pneumo, uh, strep pneumoniae. Um, I, if you're following me on your PowerPoint, there's a, a misspelling. Viridans is, is spelled Viridans, not Viridian or whatever, however it was, okay? So other streps, these are clinically significant. Everything on this page is clinically significant. Strep pneumo, strep Viridans, uh, group D enterococcus, and group D non enterococcus. Uh, you'll hear me say from time to time, strep group D or... Um, or just regular group D, it's also strep, okay? So it just happens to be the Lansfield group D. And in the group, group D, uh, enterococci is uh, fecalis, fecium, and durams. Again, it's enterococcus, fecalis, or strep fecalis, okay? It's, it's interchangeable. So strep group D or group D, uh, enterococcus fecalis or strep fecalis, enterococcus fecium, or strep fecium, enterococcus durams, or strep durams, okay? And then the uh, group D non-enterococcus, apologize, another typo here. This is strep bovis, strep bovis, and that's a non-enterococcus. Uh, 
So there's a group D that, which includes those four organisms, could be more, but those are the four main organisms, that's group D. And then to, there's a test to distinguish between enterococcus and non-enterococcus, and I'll, I'll tell you about that later on. Okay, so those are the main streps that um, you'll be tested on, pyogenes, A. galactii, pneumonia, viridans, uh, enterococcus, and non-enterococcus. Make sure you know these, okay? And now the tests, the PYR test, I'll explain that to you later on, but that distinguishes between strep pyogenes and enterococcus, and it's positive. And it's positive. Okay, and then bacitracin test. Now this is bacitracin. Bacitracin is an antibiotic, but this is a disc. It's a bacitracin disc, and that will um, distinguish your beta, beta strips. Okay, remember your beta strips are pyogenes, uh, A. galactii, and the C and the CNG strips. Okay, so bacitracin will separate pyogenes. Pyogenes is the only one that's sensitive. Everything else is resistant. And I'll go over sensitive, sensitive versus resistant later on with these, with these um, antibiotic discs. The optican disc, um, optican or the P disc. The bacitracin is an A, A disc or a B disc. It can be either A or B. Um, and optican is a P disc. And the P disc is, uh, to uh, identify strep pneumonia. If, if, um, if it's sensitive to the PDIS, then you have strep pneumonia. Again, I'm gonna go over this uh, in depth a little further on later on this lecture. And then there's called the CAMP tests. <clears throat> and then the CAMP tests, um, what happens, uh, it's a reaction between Staph aureus uh, and a suspected group B strep. And when you do, uh, when you mix those two organisms together or um, uh, streak them perpendicular to each other, what happens is you get an arrowhead. And that's a CAMP test. And I'll explain that to you later. So these are the main biochemical tests. Uh, without, without getting in depth to uh, the mechanics of each test, there's the PYR test, the bacitracin test, the optican or PDISC, and the CAMP test. There's a hippurate hydrolysis test, and this is for strep A. galacti. It's specific for strep A. galacti. And then there's a biosolubility test. Uh, we'll be doing this in the laboratory. That's where you, we have colonies of suspected strep pneumonia uh, versus an alpha strep. The biosolubility test is where you take um, sodium deoxycholate and add a drop to the colonies. And if the colonies disappear, it's a really easy test. If the colonies disappear, then you have strep pneumo. If they don't disappear, if the colonies remain, then you just have a regular alpha strep or strep viridans. Uh, esculin hydrolysis or the bioesculin on bioesculin auger. That's to identify group D strep. Now that's not group D enterococcus, which includes group D enterococcus and group D non-enterococcus. But at this point at the bioesculin level, you are not distinguishing between enterococcus and non-enterococcus. Bioesculin will only identify group D. If you have, um, and it's a black, it's a, it turns the auger slant black. So if you have a positive bioesculin test, you have group D and nothing about enterococcus, okay? It's group D. Uh, 6.5 salt tolerance test where we have a broth that's either thioglycolate or TSB. If you have growth in the 6.5 uh, salt tolerance test, if there's growth, meaning that the tube is cloudy, uh, the organism tolerates the salt, the 6.5% salt, then you have group D enterococcus. If it's clear, that means the organism did not tolerate it and, and the organisms died. That's the group D non-enterococcus, okay? I'll go into that later on as well. Okay, streptococcus. General, characteristic, general characteristics. These organisms, uh, morphology is gram-positive coxy in singles, pairs, or chains. In liquid media, remember I told you that in liquid media, 
their natural morphology uh, can be is seen. And in this case for strep, the natural morphology is changed. The reason why you see on the gram stain, you can see singles and pairs is because when you do your prep, you know, when you have your drop of water or whatever, and you mix it with, with the loop, you're breaking up those chains into the singles and the pairs. And then hopefully you'll probably see a lot of chains there, depending on how vigorous you're making that suspension for the gram stain. But in its natural form, in its natural original form, streptococcus is in chains, okay? Um, as opposed to the staph, staph, all the staph or microcaucasiae are catalase positive. All the streps are catalase negative. So that's, that's the main test that you can, can perform to distinguish between staph and strep. You can also look at colony morphology. For example, if I saw a yellow if I saw a bright lemon yellow colony, I'm not going to do a catalase test right away. I'm, it's that a bright yellow uh, lemon yellow colony. That's micrococcus. So definitely it's not strep. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go over more on colony morphology because you get, you, the rest are white colonies, depending on, on how big the colony is and how big the beta hemolysis is. I'll go over that because that way you can actually visually recognize what's a staph and what's a strep because a staph aureus is a white colony beta hemolytic and strep pyogenes is a white colony beta hemolytic. But I can tell you, I can show you how to distinguish visually the difference between the two white colonies. And then a white colony that's non-hemolytic, that's a coag negative staph. And then you know how to distinguish between um, staph epidermidis and staph saprophyticus. We'll go over that in class. These organisms are aerobic to facultative anaerobic. So in broth media, they'll, they'll grow throughout the tube. Uh, aerobic, meaning that they can, they can live at the top of the tube, no problem. Uh, facultative anaerobic, they can tolerate anaerobic conditions, but they prefer a little bit of oxygen. So they'll live at the bottom of the tube and also actually throughout the tube. So strep will be throughout the tube. Um, an oxidizer like micrococcus is a facultative aerobe, which means that in broth media, micrococcus will live towards the top. That's where the oxygen is. It's, a, it's an obligate aerobe. It's not gonna live at the bottom because there's no oxygen at the bottom of the tube. Strep is fastidious, meaning that fastidious means, meaning that it has a special nutritional requirement. In this case, it requires blood-based media and it forms lactic acid from carbohydrates. Okay, this, this picture here on the right, that's strep, okay? It could be strep A, it could be strep B, it could be strep C, F, and G, it could be strep viridans, and it can be um, it can be strep viridans, and that's about it. It's all the streps, with the exception of strep pneumo. Strep pneumo are diplococci. Strep pneumo, know this, that strep pneumo does not exist in chains. Strep pneumo exists only in paired as paired diplococci, okay? Paired diplococci. Otherwise, the morphology of the other streps, uh, pyogenes, agalactae, C, F, and G, uh, and viridan strep. This is exactly what it looks like. So if I say, can you distinguish between this and pneumo? I, and you'll say yes, because pneumo is paired, paired diplococci only, okay? Strep, this strep pyogenes, that's, that's the main pathogen in, in uh, this lecture, strep pyogenes, group A strep. That's your strep throat, okay? Upper respiratory tract, and it can also be found on the skin. So primary infection is acute pharyngitis. Um, strep group A can be found in wound infection, a really bad in, uh, wound infection. In fact, flesh-eating strep, if you ever heard of flesh-eating strep, this is the guy that'll do it. It's a difficult organism to treat once it becomes a flesh-eating bacteria. So wound infection, and then impetigo, another wound infection, okay? But the primary infection, the main one is acute pharyngitis. That's your strep throat. That's the common, that's what uh, 
patients coming into the ER and the urgent care complain about. They have a cough, they have a sore throat. It's the acute pharyngitis. And then they send a swab to the laboratory to do a strep test, okay? Strep group A pharyngitis. Okay, primary infection, the serious infections are scarlet fever, erysipelas, septicemia. Okay, when septicemia, that means in your blood culture, positive blood culture, group A strep in the blood is not good. When it gets to your brain on meningitis, when you get, when the organism localizes on your meninges, group A strep can be really bad, causing a meningitis. Erysipelas, what I mentioned, is also known as St. Anthony's fire. <coughs> And that's where it results from a fiery red rash with red uh, raised edges, and it's seen on, on, on the face. So it's called St. Anthony's fire or erysipelas, an uh, infection of the upper layers of the skin. Again, erysipelas, bacteremia, and meningitis. Strep pyogenes, as I mentioned earlier, necrotizing fasciitis, that's the flesh-eating strep. Okay, can also cause pneumonia, uh, strep, TSS, toxic shock syndrome, post-infection sequelae uh, can be uh, post-infection sequelae. And that's if you don't treat it right away, you can convert into rheumatic fever or glomerulonephritis. Determinants of pathogenicity, pathogenicity this is what uh, allows the organism to be a bad organism. Uh, the protein F for attachment of the organism, protein M, antiphagocytic. So if it's in your blood, uh, it has an antiphagocytic mechanism so that macrophages and neutrophils will not attack it. Streptokinase um, from, um, from, your co from your coag lectures and hyaluronidase. These are your determinants of pathogenicity. Streptolysin O, another way of detecting strep pyogenes is anti-streptolysin O. That's a test in the laboratory. It's a pretty long test. I don't think they do it anymore. It's called the ASO. And it's heat labile and uh, heat labile, uh, I'm sorry, heat stable and oxygen labile. That means you can subject it to heat, but in the presence of oxygen, it'll die. And then another one is streptolysin S, where it's the opposite, oxygen stable and heat labile. Then there's DNS, and then there's autoantibodies that attack, attack the heart tissue. There, you can form an antigen antibody complex, uh, that which will build up in the kidney. So these are the things that uh, allow strep pyogenes to cause a really bad disease. Okay, the rule that I was taught about strep pyogenes is eight days. If you have a sore throat, you need to treat that sore throat, especially if you have a uh, strep pyogenes, you need to treat within eight days. Uh, I was taught the eight day rule. So at first you have pharyngitis and that's your strep throat. If you don't treat it, this is if you don't treat it, it will develop into scarlet fever. Scarlet fever the reason why it's called scarlet fever is because now you have a red rash that's all over your body. Remember the erysipelas, that's all over your face, the St. Saint, Saint, um, Saint Anthony's fire. That, that's actually after the pharyngi uh, pharyngitis. But now it's migrating all over your body. It first starts in the face and then it goes all over your body. You have the scarlet fever. Red rash all over the body is scarlet fever. And then that, again, if you still don't treat it, then it's going to turn into the more serious rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever is inflammation of the heart, blood vessels, and joints. So as you can see, uh, the points of infl inflammation, that it, the disease has progressed into something serious. So rheumatic fever is a pretty serious, is a pretty serious illness. Scarlet fever is just a I mean, if you see a child that's red all over, you know, right away you're gonna to have to think strep strep uh, pyogenes infection. Uh, the first symptom when they first come in again is a sore throat or a strep throat. And that's um, the initial complaint when they come into the ER or the urgent care. So that's the progression of a strep pyogenes um, uh, disease. Start with pharyngitis, then scarlet fever, and then rheumatic fever. Okay, strep pyogenes in the laboratory on culture, and hopefully we'll see cultures when we read cultures. Uh, this 
organism or the colonies are pinpoint to small and they're white, circular, convex, translucent. But the main thing is that it's beta hemolytic. So this, this organism has a small white colony with a, with a relatively large zone of beta hemolysis. Okay, that's what strip pyogenes is. You do a catalase test, it'll be negative. Another definitive test for strep pyogenes is the PYR test, and then the bacitracin susceptibility test. Those are the two main ones. Actually, the, the bacitracin is more common. And then once you get the uh, specimen in the laboratory after, after you uh, get culture on your plates, then you can do the PYR test. The bacitracin you can actually plant on initial, uh, initial planting where you, you take your swab, in your primary streak, you drop an A disc. And then the next day, already you've done your A disc, your bacitracin susceptibility test. If you see a zone of susceptibility, then, then you can say that this, this culture is positive for group A strep. And then you can confirm it with those beta hemolytic colonies by doing the PYR test. PYR test is positive for group D and A and A, okay. Hyperate hydrolysis will be negative because hyperate hydrolysis is for group B strep. The CAMP test will be variable, 80% positive, but usually the CAMP test <coughs> is for group B strep. Okay, you see that, okay, so this, the beta hemolytic area here is all group A strep. That means the organism had hemolyzed blood. That means the organism is alive. But you see around the disc, there's no hemolysis. There's no hemolysis. So that means the organism was susceptible. It died, so it did not lyse the red blood cells in the media. So this is the bacitration susceptibility test. The organism, so it suscept is susceptible, mean, meaning that it died and did not harm the media. So this is a susceptibility test. Around here, um, the organism is, I wouldn't say resistant because it hasn't even been tested by the bacitration. The, the bacitration in this disc will migrate from the disc outward radially and it only migrated this far. If it migrated much further than this, then the whole plate would be non-hemolytic, okay? It's the only reason why this is beta hemolytic and this is not is because the range of the antibiotic migrating from this disc is only that far, okay? It's only that far. We'll go over this when I, we do the susceptibility uh, lecture and I think that is tomorrow. Okay, so here it's susceptible. This is susceptible to bacitration. Therefore, it is group A strep. Again, here's that, here's that uh, picture again with the chains. So this is group A strep. This is group B strep. This is viridan strep and um, group C, F, and G. The only way you can tell the difference between it, uh, all of those is biochemical testing, and this is what it, this is what it looks like on gram saying. You'll see you will see chains, you'll see pairs, and you'll see singles. Gram positive coxy in pairs, chains, and regular gram positive coxy. Okay, this is the gram saying, and the reason again why it you see pair uh, the pairs and chains and the singles is that when you make your suspension for the gram stain, you're mixing it up with a loop. This is its natural form, chains, okay? Okay, group B strep. So group A is strep pyogenes, group B is strep agalacti. Found in the normal flora, upper respiratory tract, lower GI tract, but more importantly, group B is clinically significant in the female genital tract. Clinical significance, neonatal purulent meningitis can cause a bad uh, meningitis in uh, newborns and can, can also uh, cause sepsis in newborns. Peripheral sepsis, which is also called childbed fever, and also can be found in wound infections. This is group B, A galactii, okay? Clinical significance are the top, those top three there, postpartum infection, endometriosis, septic shock. Okay, also can cause pneumonia, endocarditis, arthritis, and osteomyelitis. This is why, because of the, 
potential for causing the, the purulent meningitis and the childbed fever is that's why um, women who are pregnant, part of their prenatal screening is a group B strep screen. I don't know if you've heard of that, but uh, the G, it's called GBS, group B screening. So if uh, the patient is positive for group B strep, then the doctor has to take certain precautions. Okay, laboratory description, gram positive coxie in chains, similar to pyogenes, but smaller zone of hemolysis. This has a, a thinner zone of hemolysis. You might not even almost call it gamma from just looking at it, but it is beta hemolytic. And I can tell you how to uh, determine this real, real beta hemolysis by doing a simple test. The colonies are larger than the strep pyogenes. Remember, strep pyogenes, pyogenes are white colonies with a larger zone, uh, white colonies that are small with a relatively large zone of hemolysis. Some strains are gamma and the colonies look milky, just like this. If you see this, and this is, this is classic group B strep. You see this and you see how it's kind of milky, it's white and gray, white and gray. Well, if you take a swipe with your loop across, just like that, you'll see the beta hemolysis. You take the colony away and underneath that colony, you'll see the beta hemolysis. That's why it's a thin zone of beta hemolysis around the colony. You can barely see it. But if you wanna see the true hemolysis, there's two ways to do it. You take, you take the plate and you look it up to the, you um, look at it um, to the ceiling light. And then you'll see that the, the red cells in the, in the blood auger have lysed or you can take a, take a loop and just swipe one side of this, um, you know, these group of colonies here, the beta hemolysis will remain. If it, was not, if it was not beta hemolysis, then what you would see is you would see the red auger, okay? But since you see underneath the colonies, um, red blood cells that is hemolyzed, then that's the beta hemolysis, okay? So, going to try to get some blood auger plates so you can actually see that you'll you'll plate out group B strep and then you can actually take a look at the hemolysis uh, I want to do uh, colony colony um, characteristics on media or the different types of media that you use and that'll also help uh, when you read cultures okay so you see milky colonies like this the white and the gray then that is group B strep strep a galactii Okay, so bacitracin negative, bacitracin is only def definitive for group A. Uh, hyperate hydrolysis positive, that's specific for group A, but unfortunately the hyperate hydrolysis test is kind of an antiquated test. Another test that's a good test to do is the CAMP test. Um, CAMP test, uh, I'll show you that later on. And it's it. Uh, what you're doing is you're creating arrowheads, an arrowhead, um, formation on the media. It looks like arrowhead. And then you can do serologic testing where you have uh, latex, latex beads that are coated with anti-A or anti-B or anti-CF uh, and G. And then with the anti-B, it'll be positive. So the latex test is really, is really easy test. There's the arrowhead. So this is the CAMP test. So this line here is Staph aureus. This is Staph aureus. And if you want to test to see if a certain beta hemolytic strip is group B, you, you streak it perpendicular to the staph aureus without touching, without touching this line. This is a test. Streak it perpendicular to the staph aureus. Then you incubate it. And if it's group B, this is a positive CAMP test. It forms arrowheads. Okay, that's the CAMP test. Also too, okay, so I'm gonna hit the pause button right now. With these, in these lectures, when you see this, any kind of image uh, that you see like this or, or this, images like these, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be collecting these and I'm gonna be giving you what's called a picture test. And I've done that in previous classes. And I'm gonna ask you a question about all these images. So, Pay attention to what I say about these images because you'll be test. That'll be um, part of your lab exam. Okay, that'll be part of your lab exam. 
Okay, CF and G beta hemolytic strep, not really clinically significant, not really identified too much. Uh, these streps, the CF and G, are part of your normal flora, part of the skin, nasopharynx, GI tract, and genital tract. Not so much significant as uh, the strep A galactii, the group B strep. Um, for genital, for female genital, um, and newborns, group B is the one important, important one. For strep throats, it's group A, pyogenes. So pyogenes for, for uh, pharyngitis, scarlet fever, and rheumatic fever. Group B strep for um, uh, female genital tract issues, like uh, the, um, you know, the group B strep on prenatal screening, that kind of stuff, okay? Genital tract. CF and G clinical significant, mostly compromised patients, acute pharyngitis, uh, group G malignancies. I'm really not going to push CF and G because it's, it's not really clinically significant. I didn't see it on, on my board exam because they want you to focus on the A, B, pneumo, not so much viridans because viridans is normal flora, but it can be a problem. And um, yeah, pneumo and then the enterococcus. <clears throat> CF and G lab description, grayish white colonies. When, when I say grayish white colonies, I'm almost saying group B strep. Definitive testing, ID is unimportant, okay, but must be differentiated from group A because group A is clinic, clinically significant. You do the PYR test. I'll explain that to you later. The PYR test is definitive for group A and enterococcus. Evokes the um, the Vogue's Proskauer, uh, we're not going to do that test. The Hippariate Hydrolysis test, we're not going to do. The CAMP test for Group B, uh, hopefully we'll do, and hopefully it'll work. Um, it'll work in the lab. Okay, pneumo is not chains. Okay, remember that is the one strep. All the other streps are in chains, but this one, strep pneumoniae is a diplococcus. It's a gram positive coxy in pairs. Okay, it's a major cause of bacterial pneumonia. Synonyms, pneumococcus or diplococcus. So those terms I can probably interchange with strep pneumo. So we see diplococci or this is pneumococcus. Normal flora is in the nasopharynx. Clinical, clinically significance, clinical significance, it has a capsule. This organism has a capsule which means if it has a capsule on culture, on the plates, it has uh, a wet look. It has a mucoidy look, okay? Any organism that has a capsule will have, um, you know, uh, colonies will be wet or very mucoidy, okay? Like for example, Klebnumo is a mucoidy colony. Okay, so that means it has a capsule. So the, that capsule in terms of the antigen is the K antigen. Remember the three antigens. I don't know if I, I told you, but the caps, the antigen for the capsule is called the K antigen. For the antigen for the actual bacteria, the body of the bacteria is the O antigen. And the antigen for the flagella is the H, H antigen, H flagella, somatic O for the body, and the K capsule, capsular for the capsule of the organism. This organism will cause pneumonia and bacteremia. Uh, the most common infection is meningitis, um, ear infection, otitis media, and sinusitis. So strep pneumonia is a pretty serious organism. This is a lactophenol cotton blue prep, and you can actually see the capsule there, okay? And you can see all, all the organisms are paired, paired coxy, diplococci. <clears throat> lancet shape, blunt, bluntly pointed, which means uh, lancet shape, meaning that they, they join at a point, uh, at a point. I'll draw, maybe I'll draw it for you tomorrow when I'm in the classroom. Frequently encapsulated and stimulated by CO2. Strep pneumonia has to, has to grow in either the candle jar or CO2 incubator. And I wish we had a CO2 incubator in the lab. So paired coxy with uh, paired coxy capsulated. See how the colonies are wet and mucoid? That's because of the capsule. Anything that has a capsule, 
like pleb pneumo, strep pneumo, that means it has a capsule, okay? That's colony morphology, small mucoid. And the greenish color is alpha hemolysis. Greenish color is alpha hemolysis as opposed to beta hemolysis. The greenish color uh, alpha hemolysis is partial hemolysis. Complete hemolysis is the beta hemolysis. And no hemolysis is gamma, okay? So these are alpha hemolytic colonies. They look like oil droplets or water droplets. The non-encapsulated, they do exist. That's what, that's what the strep pneumo looks like. But you can there's a, still a test that you can perform to identify strep pneumonia. On blood auger, the colonies are small glistening, and these are alpha hemolytic colony, colonies. So if you have a respiratory culture and you're, you're suspicious, um, what you'll do is you'll streak for growth. That means you're not going to streak for isolation and drop the P disc. You'll drop a P disc. And if the next day you see a zone of sensitivity, like a zone of inhibition around the disc, then it, that's positive for pneumonia. I'll show that to you later on. Okay, alpha hemolytic colonies right there. Okay, satellitism, it looks like uh, form satellites around white blood cells. I'll talk about that later on. Okay, definitive test is the optican disc. That's the P disc. The definitive test for strep pyogenes is the A disc. Okay, so you have an A disc and a P disc. So typically when you have a respiratory culture, when I was on the bench training and we had a respiratory culture and we were planting from swabs coming in from the clinic or the wards, it's a respiratory culture, on the primary streak, we would drop an A disc or a P disc. And the next day, because it saves time, if you see a zone of inhibition around either of them, then you either have pneumonia or group A strep. Okay, so the optican P disc susceptibility positive, which means susceptibility, a zone of in inhibition. The organism is susceptible, which means it will not, it does not like the optican, it won't grow in close proximity to the P disc, but further out, then you'll, you will get the growth. Just like the uh, strep pyogenes, the, um, <clears throat> the contents of the disc will only diffuse out so, so much. And that, that area of diffusion where the contents of the optican or the bacitracin had diffused out, that will affect the bacteria. So the bacteria will be susceptible. In this case, for the optican, strep pneumonia, um, susceptibility um, will have that zone of inhibition. The other test is called the biosolubility test. And in this test, we really don't use bile, we use sodium deoxycholate. Okay, there's that zone of inhibition. This, the P disc is the optican disc. Okay, this means the strep does not like the, the, the contents of the optican, therefore it will not grow. That, that's susceptible. That means this organism is susceptible to the P disc. In this case here, this is a regular, probably a viridan strep. So oftentimes if you're gonna do a, 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 a P disc, it's either gonna be strep pneumo like this, uh, your guess was correct, or your guess was incorrect. It's not pneumo. It's probably a regular viridans. Viridans, it doesn't care. It's resistant. Uh, it's resistant to the optican, so it'll grow. Okay, it'll grow around the optican disc. So this is a negative test for optican. This is a positive for pneumo. Okay, if you see something like this, uh, P for pneumo, optican disc. And that's the viridans group. Not really speciated, you usually call beer dance group. Normal flora, part of the part of the oral cavity, the GI tract, and the female genital tract. Clinical significance, like I said, it's not clinically significant, but it can be opportunistic. It has a low virulence. Remember what virulence means. Virulence means tells you how aggressive the organism is. Okay. Subacute bacter uh, bacterial endocarditis. It became uh, it's um, plaque and caries, uh, dental caries. So if you're 
Um, some doctors, when they do a teeth cleaning, they might ask you to take some antibiotics. That's because in your mouth floor, you have this Viridans group uh, can, can get into your bloodstream. And once it gets into your bloodstream, this Viridans uh, strep, it can localize in your uh, heart valve and cause the subacute bacterial endocarditis. The strep Viridans even though it's clinically insignificant, this organism that's part of your mouth flora, just because you have a teeth cleaning, a deep teeth cleaning, that strep, that insignificant strep can get into your bloodstream and localize in your heart valve and can cause subacute bacterial endocarditis, okay? Uh, bacteremia, I just mentioned that, and, pro and it can also cause problems with your meninges, causing meningitis. Uh, Viridans group, just like the group A and the group B in Enterococcus, these are gram positive and chains. Calling mor morphology on blood, they're alpha, pinpoint uh, or larger. These are alpha strep or gamma hemolytic, uh, and they are smooth or matte. Very insignificant alpha hemolytic colony. There it is. Does, it, does that look like group A strep? The answer is yes. Group B, yes. Uh, Enterococcus, yes. Pneumo? No. Remember, pneumo is diplococci. So this is what all the other, all the streps look like with the exception of pneumo. Okay. So by saying that this is a viridan strep, how do I know this is a viridan strep? Did I do a PYR test? Did I do a bacitracin test? Did I do a hippy rate hydrolysis test? No, I didn't. Based on the gram stain, you cannot speciate a strep Okay, you cannot speciate a strep. You have to do the biochemical test, like the PYR, the A disc. Uh, would I do a P disc on this? No, I wouldn't, because it's not diplococci. Okay, I wouldn't do a P disc. P disc is is for optic and it's for pneumo, and pneumo is diplococci. Definitely don't have diplococci here. Rear dance group, the optic or the P disc, it's optic and pedis is resistant and that's the viridans which means it'll it's resistant it's not uh, affected by the optic and contents in the optic and disc therefore it's resistant it'll grow okay biosolubility um you take that sodium deoxycholate put a drop on the colony it won't dissolve okay bioelasticity it won't turn bioelasticity black it will grow. Uh, will it grow on 6.5% sodium chloride? No, it doesn't like 6.5 and hippie rate hydrolysis negative. Okay, so um, there's a strep differentiation table that I'd like for you guys to take a look at after the lecture. I'll refer to this table and we'll review that. Okay, moving on to enterococcus. It's strep enterococcus. Enterococcus is group D. Normal flora of birds, animal, and humans in uh, large bowel and the female genital urinary tract. Enterococcus is clinically significant, uh, found in UTI, urinary tract infection, bacteremia, pelvic abscess, peritonitis, wound infection, endocarditis, eye infection. Enterococcus can be found in all of those uh, infections. So it is clinically significant. Laboratory description, colony morphology on blood. It's small, less opaque. Enterococcus can be alpha, beta, or gamma, okay? Uh, the colonies can be glo glossy white. Uh, like I said, beta, alpha, or gamma. My experience is that all the enterococci I've seen are gamma hemolysis, okay? But it can be beta or gamma. The definitive testing for enterococcus Bacitracin susceptibility is negative. Remember, bacitracin is for group A. Hippurate hydrolysis is negative. Remember, hippurate hydrolysis is for group B. Camp test ne is negative. Camp test is definitive for group B. Optican susceptibility, it's also negative. Remember, the optican susceptibility is for pneumo. Okay? Remember, remember that. A, B, B, and pneumo. For enterococcus, the definitive test for enterococcus or group D is bioesculin. It'll turn bioesculin agar black. Okay, that's group D. Now, a group D strep can be broken down into two groups. There's the enterococcus group, 
and then there's the non-enterococcus group. You need to distinguish between the two. The two. Both enterococcus and non-enterococcus will be bile esculin positive or produce a black bile esculin slant. Both of these will do that. But to distinguish between enterococcus and non-enterococcus is that you have to do the 6.5% sodium chloride tolerance test. Group D enterococcus will grow, will tolerate. It will tolerate 6.5% sodium chloride or it'll be cloudy. The non-enterococcus will not tolerate the 6.5% sodium chloride. Therefore, it'll be clear. Okay, so the next day, if you're ruling out an enterococcus, you take a look at your bioescalin slants and it'll be black. And then if you want to do the salt tolerance, you do, um, uh, you check to see growth. It's either growth, no growth. If it's growth or cloudy, then it's group D enterococcus. If it's clear, then it's group D non-enterococcus. Okay, we'll, we'll be doing the, that test, uh, these tests in the laboratory, provided we get supplies, and that, which is a whole other issue. Don't get me started. Okay, enterococcus. Organ speciation is required to differentiate MDR, multiple drug-resistant organism. Uh, MDR is a multiple drug resistant organism because they have what's called a VRE. VRE is a vancomycin resistant enterococcus. A vancomycin resistant enterococcus is pretty serious because all group, all gram positive organisms are supposed to be susceptible to vancomycin. However, when you come across an organism like an enterococcus that is resistant to vancomycin, that's rare and that's a pretty serious uh, infectious disease problem, okay? So enterococcus needs to be speciated. All right, case study. 20-year-old female reported to the ER with abdominal pains. Uh, with abdominal pains, urine catheter culture reported greater than 50,000 colonies per ml of isolate. Following results were reported. Okay, you got beta hemolytic uh, colonies, CAMP test negative, hippie rate hydrolysis variable, 6.5% salt positive, biosolubility negative, PYR positive, bioesculin positive, SXT resistant. Um, SXT is self trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. Um, don't worry about it. Uh, that's usually for group A strep, bacitracin resistant and optican resistant. So there's some result lab results here. Okay, beta hemolysis can be group A, group B, or group D. Okay, beta hemolytic. Camp test negative that rules out group B. Okay, because camp positive would, would be group B. Hip rate hydrolysis is not reliable as a variable. 6.5% salt positive, which means it tolerates 6.5% um, sodium chloride. So we haven't yet convincingly ruled out group D. We ruled out and we haven't ruled out group A, okay? So right now we have group A and group D in the running. Biosolubility is negative, so that rules out pneumo. PYR positive doesn't do us any good because PYR is positive for group D and group A. Bioesculin positive, okay? That's interesting because group D is bioesculin positive, but group A is not bioesculin positive. SXT resistant, that's good. That's um, group A, but then again, we're not going to use the SXT. Bacitracin resistant also rules out group A because group A is bacitracin sensitive and optic insensitive, forget about pneumo, right? So right now, our best bet would be group D, the enterococcus, based on PYR, based on bacitracin, based on bioesculin, uh, camp was negative, beta hemolytic rules it in, it hasn't ruled out A and D. Okay, the optogen biosolubility, forget it because we're not dealing with an alpha strep. This is for if you have an alpha strep organism with beta hemolytic. Pneumo is not definitely not alpha, and optogen. And if it's not, if it's not beta, there's no way I'm going to do an optogen test. All right. So that's my train of 
thinking in ruling out that um, in ruling out this organism. So choices are group A strep, group B strep, enterococcus, uh, non-group A, non-group B, non-group D strep. So my bet, anybody would want to guess? I think I already kind of said it. Anybody want to want to take a stab? Enterococcus. Yeah, it's. I think it's the enterococcus too. So group B strep are sensitive to bacitracin, and I think the given information was resistant and negative for bioescalin, and the given information showed bioescalin positive, uh, and six point five percent salt broth tolerant. Uh, not too many organisms other than the enterococcus, the group the enterococcus is positive or tolerant to 6.5% sodium chloride. Group B strip will grow in 6.5% broth, but are negative for bioesculin and PYR. We had bioesculin positive and uh, the PYR was positive. Non-group non A, B, or D strep will not grow in 6.5% salt. So that, that those were ruled out. So enterococcus faecalis or group D enterococcus is positive for bioesculin, which the given information showed. 6.5% salt broth tolerant and was PYR positive. So the correct answer is enterococcus faecalis or group D, group D enterococcus. I'm going to skip over this slide. Next year, I'm going to take this out. Okay, classification screen uh, hemolysis. You got your alpha hemolysis, which is partial hemolysis of red blood cells. Beta hemolysis is complete hemolysis of red blood cells. And gamma is no hemolysis. Okay, the Lansfield group, that's why we have A, B, and D, C, F, and G. Uh, Rebecca Lansfield, she was the one who classified these, these streps. Uh, there are actually 18 serological groups. Uh, A through H and uh, K through T. I'm not going to test you on this stuff. This is like history kind of stuff, but make sure you remember Rebecca Lansfield. I remember that from when I took pathogenic uh, bacteriology. Rebecca Lansfield. Okay. Alpha, beta, hemolytic, and non-hemolytic group D. So group D can be alpha, beta, or gamma. My experience is that group D is always has always been uh, gamma hemolytic. So I've never seen a, an alpha, alpha D or a beta hemolytic D. A, B, C, D, F, and G, clinically important. Some strep's not classified under Lansfield. So the one strep that's not classified under Lansfield is the strep pneumo. Pneumo doesn't have a group. It's just pneumo. And viridans doesn't have a group. Viridans, so viridans group is a collection of streps that are alpha hemolytic, not significant, but it is significant. Remember, just, just remember when you go to the dentist, if the dentist wants to give you antibiotics for a deep cleaning, that means he's going to disrupt your gum so much that you may release oral flora into your bloodstream. And that, that oral flora, which is normally not clinically significant, if it gets into your bloodstream, like I said, it can localize in your heart valve and cause subacute bacterial endocarditis. Okay. And strep pneuma, of course, is clinically significant for its respiratory issues. Differentiation scheme. Okay, gram stain. You know what the strep, you know what the streps look like, chains from broth media. Remember, the chains it will give you um, will be seen in, in its natural form from broth or liquid media. Okay, you do the catalase test. All streps. Viridans, pneumo, everything, all streps A and B are catalase negative. Okay, these are gram positive coxy pairs and chains are catalase negative, and hemolysis can be alpha, beta, or gamma. Beta helium hemolytic strep, <clears throat> you want to do a PYR and an A disc. You also do want a CAMP test because PYR for A and for A and D, but you want to go after the A. Uh, uh, pyogenes. You want to do the A-disc for pyogenes. You want to do the CAMP test for a galacti or the B-disc. Hippurate hydrolysis, if we're going to do it, is going to be for group B. And the BEA is going to be for the bioesculin auger. It's going to be for group D. 
the 6.5% salt tolerance is going to be for enterococcus versus non-enterococcus. And that's in the beta hemolytic because remember, enterococcus or group D can be alpha, beta, or gamma. If you have an alpha hemolytic colony, you want to do a P disc, the optican disc, okay? You want to do a biosolubility test to see if the colonies disappear. That's for pneumo. The P disc is for pneumo versus pneumo versus viridance because viridance is alpha hemolytic. You want to do a bioescalin auger, bioescalin media, um, because and group D enterococcus can be alpha, beta, or gamma, and a 6.5% salt tolerance because group D enterococcus, non enterococcus can be alpha, beta, or gamma. And then for gamma hemolytic, the group B strep can appear to be gamma hemolytic, so why not throw a CAMP test in there um, to rule out group B? Same for the hyperate hydrolysis. That's if you're thinking that along the lines of a group B strep. But um, Definitely for a gamma hemolytic, you want to do a bioescalin auger and a 6.5% salt tolerance test. The gamma hemolytic, like I said, almost all the, I think all the uh, group B, group D streps, the uh, enterococcus and non enterococcus have been gamma hemolytic. So the bioescalin auger and the salt tolerance test will identify um, the enterococcus versus non enterococcus. Differentiation screen uh, scheme, interpret biochemical pattern, identification based on reactivity, and use the chart provided. I'll show you that chart at the end of this lecture. Biochemical identification, PYR test. Okay, the PYR stands for um, pyroglutamyl aminopeptidase. Pyroglutamyl aminopeptidase. I'm not gonna let you memorize that. Just It's just a PYR test. The PYR test, remember, is for A and D. A and D for PYR. The reagent is really simple. PYR, it's just a disc with PYR on it. Uh, the reagent, uh, add the organism to the disc, and you look, moisten, moisten this with water, apply the organism, incubate it two minutes, and then add a drop of the reagent. And then you look for a color change. It's really easy test. Hopefully, I think we may be getting this and we can do this test in class. Positive is red color in two minutes. Negative is orange to no red. Positive control. Remember, PYR is positive for A and D. So positive control can be group A, pyogenes, or enterococcus faecalis or strep faecalis or group D. Any other strep like... Um, a galactii, group B, A galactii, or a viridan strep can be used for a negative control. Bacitracin, remember the zone of inhibition around the bacitracin disc. The organism did not like the bacitracin, so therefore it's, this is a positive susceptibility. Bacitracin uh, is used to identify group A. Bacitracin is used to presumptively identify group A. If uh, other beta streps are not susceptible to bacitracin, that's why if you see susceptibility, you have a group A strep, you have pyogenes. The bacitracin disc is, bacitracin is an antibiotic. It contains 0 0.04 units of A or B disc. So the disc like I say, I say, you know, in the disc here, it's called, that's an A disc. It can also, it can also be a B, B for bacitracin. So A or B, A for group A or B for bacitracin, take your pick depending on the manufacturer, okay? So if you see an A disc, it's probably an A for group A, or if you see B on the disc, it's probably B for bacitracin. Either way, it's for strep pyogenes, okay? So this is easy, streak a plate for growth, drop a disc, lightly tap the disc and incubate it. And then you look for a zone of inhibition. If you do see a zone of inhibition, which is which equals susceptibility, then you're positive for group A strep or strep pyogenes. Negative uh, QC, you can use uh, strep A galactii because that's a beta hemolytic strep. So notes, I say the organism designed for pure, Designed for pure culture, do not use a direct plate initial. CF and G are susceptible. Just, just uh, 
as a side note, CF and G are susceptible, so is A, but CF and G are not clinically significant. Hippurate hydrolysis, this test is kind of antiquated. Uh, this is uh, the hippuricase can hydrolyze hippuric acid from sodium hippurate, producing the two uh, sodium benzoate and glycine. Sodium benzoate and glycine. You might be asked this, so you might want to asterisk this. For the hippurate hydrolysis, what are the end products of the hippurate hydrolysis? Uh, hydro hydrolyzing, when you take sodium hippurate and hydrolyze it, what are your two end products? And your answer would be sodium benzoate and glycine. Okay, the substrate is sodium hippurate. This is a rapid test. Um, you take some colonies, you add it to 0.4 ml of sodium hippurate, you incubate it for two hours. And after two hours, you have to ha add ninhydrin reagent. Usually ninhydrin is, is kind of, um, in protein electrophoresis, ninhydrin is, is kind of like a, uh, a stain that will bring out protein. Well, ninhydrin here will, will cause uh, anything positive to be, to be black. So 0.2 mL ninhydrin reagent added, mix it, and there's your hippurate hydrolysis. If you see the deep blue color, then that's positive for a hippurate hydrolysis. Negative would be you would not get that dark blue. Standard test for sodium benzoate, um, in inoculate three to five colonies and um, transfer 0.8 mils of supernatant to a clean tube, then add your, uh, add your reagents. This is another type of hippurate hydrolysis test that re which requires centrifugation, but, then, but again, we're not gonna do this test. And positive for strep galactin, negative for Enterococcus fecalis. I kind of don't like this because the positives and negatives are, are almost similar or different shades of purple. So since it's different shades of purple, that's why I don't like it. The camp test. Okay. So again, the, the streak down the middle is your staph aureus. Streak perpendicular to that is your suspected group B. Okay. Cumulative activity of staph beta lysine of the red blood cells is enhanced by extracellular factor produced by some beta hemolytic strep. In this case, it would be strep A galactic or group B strep. And, and the, this is called the camp factor in the strep. So you take staph aureus, like I said, you go down the middle and then two streak lines should be as close to possible, but without touching the staph line. And you can beat that overnight at 37 degrees. And if you see an arrowhead hemolysis, we'll, we'll try this again in the laboratory, provided we get um, good living staph aureus and um, uh, good blood auger plates. Right now, we don't have blood auger plates. So a positive test would be the formation of arrowhead hemolysis, and negative would be no arrowheads. And that's hopefully what you'll get. I actually did get this reaction when I was in training. Positive camp test is group B strep or strep A galacti. Negative would be any other strep, enterococcus fecalis or group A. So this is a, uh, you have a beta hemolytic strep and you wanna know if it's group B. So your beta hemolytic streps are A and B. Um, a would be a negative camp descent test and uh, strep A galacti would be a positive uh, QC for this, organ for this test. Optican, that's the P disc. There's a so zone of inhibition. Okay. So, strep pneumonia is inhibited by a low concentration of optican. Use the P disc, which is five micrograms. And the reagent is ethyl hydrocuprine, hydrochloride. I'm not going to let you uh, write that. Just call it P disc. You need a blood auger plate and you need sample. You mat streak it, which means you streak for growth. You don't streak for isolation. Streaking for growth is like this. So you streak it, no gaps. So you streak for growth and um, apply the disc, tap it so it sticks to the auger. Incubate it overnight. Make sure you incubate it in a candle jar or CO2 because uh, strep survives in, in uh, CO2, low oxygen. 
Uh, do not use ambient air. Don't incubate it in a 37 degree incubator. And you look for a zone of inhibition. You don't have to measure it, even though it's um, greater than or equal to 14 millimeters. We're not going to measure it because we're not actually doing curvy bower sensitivities. If you see the, see the zone of inhibition, then that means it's positive for pneumo. Okay. Positive for strep pneumo, negative control would be strep mitis, any other strep, alpha strep. The biosolubility test is also a neat test. Uh, the principle is you take your colonies and when you add your reagent, the colonies will actually dissolve you know, with a biosalt reagent. And the biosalt reagent is sodium deoxycholate. Okay, 10% biosalt solution, which is sodium deoxycholate. Okay, so what you do is you, you um, can take isolated colonies or a group of colonies that you think are suspected strep pneumo colonies. You add a drop of uh, a sodium deoxycholate. It's a, it's a liquid reagent in an eyedropper bottle. One drop, you drop it onto the colony and uh, incubate it at 35 degrees for half an hour. And what happens, what will happen if it's pneumo is that the colony will disappear. So you make sure you look at the colony, see that it's raised from the media, and you can actually see that the colony is actually there. So when the colony disappears, you look at it again, now you see just a flat. It's just the colony is now flat because it's disappeared. A negative test means the colony remains intact. Only the colonies, not the hemolysis, is affected. Okay, it affect the colonies is what you're looking at. So positive test, biosolubility, strep pneumo will disappear in the presence of sodium deoxycholate and, and any other strep like uh, a group D like Enterococcus faecalis or viridan strep. Actually, viridan strep would be an, uh, a good negative control because viridans is alpha hemolytic, strep pneumo is alpha hemolytic. So you're actually doing a rule out between two alpha hemolytic colonies. Um, Viridans is alpha hemolytic and pneumo is alpha hemolytic. Which one of these alpha hemolytic colon colonies is pneumo? The one that disappears in the presence of sodium deoxycholate is your pneumo, okay? I don't know if you can see it, uh, but you add sodium deoxycholate and the colony actually is flat and it, it's disappeared. Okay, esculin hydrolysis, bioesculin hydrolysis. <clears throat> okay, bioesculin auger, BEA or BEM, which is bioesculin media. In this test, we're taking, we're looking at the organism's ability to hy hydrolyze esculin to the end products. The end products of esculin hydrolysis is glucose and esculetin. Glucose and esculetin, which in esculetin will react with iron salt. That's what forms the dark brown complex, okay? Esculetin reacts with iron salt. There's, there's I think it's ferrochloride in, in the media, the bioesculin media, media. So when, when you're forming esculetin, which is the end product of esculin hydrolysis, that reacts with the iron salt and it forms the brown black complex. So your medium is bioesculin media, esculin, ferric, oh, ferric citrate uh, color indicator. You streak it uh, onto the slant. So you have a bioesculin strand, you streak your organism on, onto the slant, you incubate it, incubate your tube at 37 degrees doesn't need to be in a candle jar 37 degrees um, overnight and you look for blackening of the auger blackening of the slant and if it's if it's black it's positive for group d remember this is only group d uh, identifying group d strep not group d enterococcus but group d strep it's really important to know because there's group D and then there's group D enterococcus, group D non-enterococcus. At this point with bioesculin, you're only identifying group D. Okay, for bioesculin negative, that means there's no blackening, just like that. The left is negative and the right is obviously positive. 
So positive control is group D enterococcus, or it can also be group D non enterococcus. Listeria, which is the gram positive rod, is also um, can be a positive control because that's also bioleskalin positive. Negative would be any other strep like uh, group B, group A, viridans, um, but not uh, group D. All right, those can be negative controls. Salt tolerance tests. What you're looking for is cloudy versus non-cloudy. Cloudy versus non-cloudy. If it's cloudy, that means it tolerates, it's living. If you see cloudy, that means the organism is living and it's tolerating the 6.5% salt. If it doesn't tolerate it, that means it's killed by the salt. That's a negative salt tolerance, okay? So we're testing the tolerance to relatively high concentration of sodium chloride. And it's useful in differentiating between enterococcus versus non-enterococcus. So you have your group D. Your group D, you, do, you have a group D because your bioleskulin was positive. But what kind of group D is it? Is it, is it enterococcus or is it non-enterococcus? That's what you need to determine. So what you have to do is take the organism and put it in to 6.5% uh, salt broth, sodium chloride broth, okay? You incubate it, take some colonies, put it in the salt broth, uh, incubate it overnight at 35 degrees. Again, CO2 is not needed. And you look for growth, no growth. If there's growth, it's enterococcus. No growth is non-enterococcus, okay? Positive is turbidity. And if it's clear, it's not tolerant to salt, it died. So positive would be uh, enterococcus or strep faecalis, that's enterococcus, or negative would be strep mitis or uh, non-enterococcus. Differentiating between micrococcus and streptococcus, you should be able to answer that right now, okay, with one test. The micrococcus is catalase positive and the strep is catalase negative, okay? Um, both groups are gram positive cocci for micrococcus tetrads. If you see tetrads in your question, no matter what, if you see the word tetrads, boom, right, right away, you're going to go micrococcus, probably micrococcus luteus. Don't say staph, okay? Tetrads equals micrococcus. If you see clusters, if you see clusters in, in the question, then you have a staph species. Staph aureus, staph epi, or staph saprophyticus. The way you, there's ways to distinguish between staph aureus versus the coag negative staph, and that's the coagulase test, okay? And then the two coag negative staph, that's the novobiosin test, okay? So if you see clusters, that's staph. If you see tetrads, that's micrococcus. Another way too for micrococcus, colony, colony characteristics. If you see bright lemon yellow, bright lemon, bright lemon yellow colonies, that's micrococcus, okay? No other organism in this course is bright lemon yellow. If you see bright lemon yellow, right away you go to your choices and you look for micrococcus. Strep, also gram positive cocci, but you'll see chains, okay? These are smaller pairs or chains, okay? Diplococci, if you see diplococci, that's strep. Remember, diplococci, strep pneumo, it will not be seen in chains. A lancet form formation, it's like mean, means that the two cocci meet at a point. Okay, I'll, I'll draw that to you for you in the lab. Viridan strep appear more elongate, but to me, to me that doesn't mean anything because viridan on the gram, uh, gram stain is equals group A strip, equals group B strip, equals enterococcus. They, they all look the same. The only different uh, strip is pneuma, which is diplococci. So on the gram stain, viridans looks like alpha strep, group A, group B, and enterococcus. Colony morphology, micrococcus, medium to are, this micrococci are usually larger colonies, staph go rapidly in 24 hours, smooth, butyraceous, con convex, and, and, um, and they're also white, okay? Staph, the colonies are larger and beta hemolytic. Micrococcus, remember that bright lemon yellow, dull in appearance can grow up to 48 hours. 
for the strep. Uh, the colonies are small, smaller pinpoint colonies. Can, they can also be white colonies. They're also hemolytic, okay? Similar to staph. And I think that's it. All right, so you all have this. This is the, this is the strep differentiation table. Okay, can you see, can you all see the table? You can't see the table. Come, I'm sharing my screen. Okay, let me see. Stop share, new share. How about a new share? Here we go. How about this one? How about now? You see it? Okay. All right. What I've done is you have this table, but I highlighted and it's updated. It's highlighted uh, the yellow. Okay. So down the left column under group, you have group A, which is strep biota, and you see group B, which is strep A, galacti, pneumo, CF, and G. Remember, that's the insignificant one. A group D, enterococcus, and group D, non enterococcus, and then your insignificant alpha strep. So you look at the hemolysis, if it's beta um, or um, for alpha strep, uh, you want to rule out pneumo versus viridans. And the way you do that is the optic and disc. Okay. Uh, for alpha strep for the group A, uh, you want to confirm group A using the bacitracin and the PYR. For, if you go down, okay, so group B, which is strep A galacti, if you want to confirm group B, then you're going to go across and you're going to use the CAMP test or the hippie rate hydrolysis, okay? For pneumo, you're going to do, look at the alpha hemolysis, you're going to do the optican test, and you're going to do the solubility. So you go down the organism, and then you go towards the right. So C, F, and G, don't worry about it. It's sensitive to bacitracin. Okay, so group D enterococcus, for example, if I want to identify group D enterococcus, go, go across the right, and you'll see that you'll do a, the bioesculin test. It's black on the bioesculin, and then you'll do the sodium chloride, sodium chloride uh, tolerance test, the salt tolerance test. Group D enteral is cloudy. And then the group D non enteral, you do the bioesculin also. It'll be black under bioesculin, but this time it'll be clear. Also, too, for group D enterococcus, you do the PYR, it's positive. So there's two organisms that are PYR, group D enteral and group A, uh, um, beta hemolytic group A strep, strep pyogenes. Okay. And then viridans, the only thing you can tell about viridans is that it's an alpha strep. Everything else is pretty much negative or non-reactive. So that's how you're going to rule out, um, like for example, A and just go across and then highlight those, those two. If you want, I'll send this to you. If you want, I'll send this to you again so you can follow my highlights. All right. Is that okay? Or are you doing it now? You can send it to us. All right. I'll send it to you. So like I said, go down, go down the left column for the different strips. And then for each strep, go across and look at the highlighted, the highlighted test. And that's how you will confirm or rule out or rule in actually that organism. So A will be ruled in with a sensitive bacitracin and a positive PIR. Those tests will rule in that organism. Okay. Are there any questions? And that's that's it for uh, this lecture. A lot of information, a lot of good information. Uh, I think it's similar to this to the staff. I'll, um, for your quizzes on Friday, I'll do some more review. Um, again, because you turned in your homework uh, on Monday, uh, I think it's a good thing that you turn in your homework because now you have review material for your quiz on Thursday. So make sure that you're, you review the homework that you turned in because a lot of the questions will be on the quizzes on Thursday. So make sure you know your, your um, 
biological safety cabinets, your biological, the four biological safety laboratories. Make sure you know your LRNs, your Sentinel, um, Sentinel and National, and uh, what's the other one, regional? And then make sure you know your, um, for example, another one, how, if you get, if you get an eye splash, how long do you, you flush your eyes? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Who said that? Jane. Me? Who's okay. me? Jane. Jane. Okay. All right. So thanks, Jane. So what I'm going to be doing is I throw out questions like that. When and I'm going to give five points extra credit to, for Jane. You guys didn't know that, but when I throw out questions like that, if you answer it, I'm going to give you bonus points. Okay, I, I really want to encourage participation. So 15 minutes, Jane, you get five extra credit points. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for participating. So a word to the wise: uh, if you know the answer, speak out. And also, too, we're going to have some uh, group. We're going to have some group activities. We're going to have a little competition between teams. I'm going to divide the class into two teams, and we're going to do a class activity where the first one who finishes the activity will get 12, 20 bonus points, and the second place finisher. Obviously, there's no third place, but the the second place finisher will get ten bonus points. Okay, so opportunity to get. A lot of points in this class. All right, that's all I have for tonight. Do any of you have any questions? So the quiz is tomorrow, is what you're saying? Uh, the quiz is Friday. Friday? Okay, you said Thursday at oh. one point. No, that, yeah, it's Friday. I'm okay. I'm, I was hoping tomorrow would be Friday, but no such luck. <laughs> so tomorrow's Thursday, and the quiz will be on Friday on the safety and um, staff and strep. One, two, no, it's on safety and staff, no strep. No strep on the test on Friday, okay? It's one, two, and three. All right, any other questions? If not, I think we'll have, because you know I'm kind of frustrated with our media situation, We'll probably have uh, a pretty light uh, lab tomorrow, and then um, we'll go from there. All right. Um, if not, then I'll see you all tomorrow at four o'clock. Okay. See you tomorrow. Good night. All right. Good night. Uh